As we go to air tonight, New South Wales is in the grip of a major bushfire emergency and blazes have broken out in the greater Sydney region with the city on alert for catastrophic conditions. At the peak of the emergency, there were 15 fires at emergency level. There are currently more than 70 fires burning. Half of them are out of control. In Sydney's northwest, late in the day, fire broke out in the suburb of Taramurra, sparking desperate efforts to save homes. Tonight, we have reporters covering the major fire grounds from Sydney all the way up the coast to near the Queensland border. But first, let's go to Nick Dole in the Sydney suburb of Taramurra. Nick, how are things looking there tonight? Well, Anita, the good news is this situation is now under control, but there are still dozens of fire crews here at South Taramurra. They're mopping up because we are starting to feel that wind. It had been northwesterly. It's now swinging around to the south, and we're really feeling it pick up some intensity. There's also been detectives on the scene to try to work out whether or not this fire was deliberately lit. And there's also been paramedics called here because a firefighter was injured uh, while trying to fight this blaze. It's believed the injury was a broken arm. Uh, all day, people who live in areas just like this one around bushland, around Sydney, uh, to the north and to the south, and even to the west, they've all been on edge uh, because we heard these catastrophic warnings. And here in South Taramara, uh, this fire took home, took hold incredibly quickly, and it came dangerously close to taking homes. Late this afternoon, the kind of emergency that everyone was dreading. Thankfully, I've got some awesome neighbours that were looking after the place, putting out a few spot fires. Within a few minutes, they took hold, prompting emergency warnings. Residents were told it was too late to leave. Well, it's just a big shock. It still is overwhelming. You don't think it's real. From above, planes and helicopters lent support to firefighters on the ground who were forced to contend with difficult terrain. Almost everywhere you look in this street, you'll see houses and cars painted pink. The blaze got so close to homes, a fire retardant had to be dropped from above. In the absence of any other obvious cause, uh, we, will, we will never reel out suspicious activity and uh, we've, got, we've got police very active across all these fire grounds. And A firefighter was injured in the frantic effort to prevent the fire taking hold. Where one of our firefighters uh, appears to have suffered uh, some fractures, uh, a fracture to the arm uh, and suspected fractured ribs. This afternoon, commuters travelling north and south were advised to leave work early to get home before the southerly change hit. From early morning, this was no ordinary day. For the first time, the threat level across Sydney was dialed up to catastrophic. By early afternoon, the dire predictions were starting to become a reality. A fire broke out at Landilo near Penrith. Fire crews were ready to pounce. Very quick response. So, yeah, like I said before, it's gone up real quick before, and yeah, they were on edge. So that was good. That was good. Kim Hamilton has run this cactus nursery for 30 years. She was sitting on her front veranda doing some paperwork when the fire broke out. And all of a sudden heard a bit of a whoosh and looked up and saw flames in the front corner. Oh, it was amazingly quick. I, I just still can't believe it. As evening fell, many were counting their luck. But fire chiefs are warning against complacency. Nick Doll, ABC News, Sydney. While Sydney got its first real taste of the bushfire crisis today, the state's north continues to cop the worst of it. As weather conditions deteriorated, fire after fire escalated to emergency level. The flames whipped up so quickly at Bora Ridge on the far north coast of New South Wales, there was nothing anyone could do to save this home. I've been standing at the Boggy Creek Road there watching it burn. Really? Yeah, I went there yesterday and collected those things that are, you know, treasured for any parent with their kids and stuff. Further inland, a massive plume of smoke was a troubling sign for the people of Emmerville. Residents did what they could to prepare for the imminent danger. I'm feeling pretty nervous, actually, but yeah, I've got horses and ferrets and dogs and, and I want to stay and protect the property as much as I can. Many left early, while others chose to stay. Try and save the place, but uh, help others. That's what we're all about in Amahal. And the local pub was still trading. What's the point where you pull out here? Virtually when the fire brigade tells me to. We'll go there. I'll we'll move out. It's not worth risking my life then. Northwest of Coffs Harbour, the town of Nana Glen came under threat, with police urging residents to get out 
while they still could. The girls are going to head into town and the guys are going to stay and defend. It's just become very dark and smoky here at Nana Glen. We've seen the first flames appear on the hill. There's now a lot of ash falling and people are feeling nervous. Back on the far north coast, as fire burnt out of control east of Nimbin, some locals took out their frustration on opposition leader Anthony Albanese and the local state MP. My house is burning down! What are you doing? Nothing! Get more money for it! Oh, my friends are out there! My whole life is out there! Everything! We're all in shock right now um, and we just think it's tragic. Um, it's, it's virgin rainforest that just will never be the same again. For communities still taking stock of the impact of these fires, there's little respite on the horizon. James Hancock, ABC News, Nana Glen. Reporter Ashley Raper is at Emmerville, which was featured in that report. Ashley, what's the latest where you are tonight? This fire has been getting closer and closer. Luckily, Juanita, it hasn't made its way here. At the moment, the winds are pushing it to the east, but that means it's heading towards the neighbouring town of Deepwater. All day, eyes have been on the hills behind me because if the blaze makes it over those hills, then there are a lot of properties in its path. And the fire front is huge. It stretches for kilometres. Residents here have been prepared, though this was the fire that tore through the town of Torrington and destroyed a dozen homes on Friday. So people knew the threat. Many left, a few remained. Right now, the people who stayed at Emmerville are feeling a lot better than they did a few hours ago, but the threat here isn't over. The winds are so unpredictable that the fire could come back this way. As for Deepwater Juanita, firefighters are putting all their resources there and hoping the blaze doesn't reach the town. Ashley Raper reporting there from Emmerville. Three properties were lost today in the rural area of Hillville near Taree. Many residents thought they'd escaped the worst, but today they found themselves right in the path of the fire. Reporter Lee Casbin spent the day there. The fire was fast and furious. The Hillville blaze south of Taree was back at emergency warning around lunchtime. It prompted some locals to leave. So we're just yeah, packing up, getting ready to go. Um, Might be time to leave, hey? Oh, it is, it is. That's why we're putting all the valuables in now, I've just organised the sheds, uh, made sure everything was clear. Within minutes, the fire front had spread. This fire is moving extremely quickly. We've just spoken to one couple who have lost their house. They thought they were safe. They've now evacuated. I've run triple zero yeah, again. Yeah, yeah. Yes, someone's on their way, yep. Those who had chosen to stay joined with firefighters to defend their properties. Others did their bit too, but some got out as quickly as they could. We're at a stage now where we're going to go. Um, it's more serious than I thought it was. Uh, the cars, well... Uh, but life's more important. Part insured, part not insured, but look, what can you do? I mean, just many, many years of restoration work and hopefully uh, it'll all turn out well. Mind you, I have prayed. And all my fingers are being crossed. Kevin Hickling's cars were safe in the end. Not all were so fortunate. Firefighters fought desperately to stop this blaze after a tractor caught a light. This crew has just arrived here. They're trying desperately to put out this fire and it looks like they may have saved some of the house. As the winds continue, there are fears more homes will come under threat. Leave Casbin, ABC News, Tari. In the Hunter Valley, residents say they had barely any warning as a fast-moving grass fire leapt into the trees and headed towards homes at North Rothbury near Cessnock. Firefighters saved the town, but before they'd even drawn breath, a new fire sparked up the road. There was no mistaking the urgency as reinforcements were rushed to Rothbury, where a fast-burning grass fire was racing towards homes. It was pretty scary. It was it come, it come roaring through that bush pretty quick. Firefighters scrambled as roofs caught alight and backyard spot fires broke out. Within what seemed like seconds, it uh, went from a small fire to crowning above the trees, and uh, yeah, it was just out of control. In the end, a row of homes were left scorched but still standing. Behind me, you can see that these power poles, which caught a light, are now being put out. They're the only thing that was between that fire front and these homes. 
and the reprieve for firefighters was brief. Embers from the fire soon sparked another blaze 20 minutes down the road at Greta. Flames went right up to this woman's home and ripped through her shed. We didn't have long, but we had just took off in panic. And all these amazing fire people saved my house. Without them bombers, they wouldn't have There's no way that they would have stopped it. Breathing a sigh of relief after a fast and furious scare. Dom Vukovic, ABC News, Rothbury. And Dom Vukovic joins us now from Rothbury. Um, Dom, residents who fled earlier today have started uh, returning. What's been their reaction? Well, hey, Juanita, there's been a real sense of relief and gratitude. Residents, like you said, have just become begun now trickling back to their homes. Uh, we spoke to one mother of two who was, was one of the first to return and uh, she began to cry. Uh, she was very emotional. She said on the drive back here she expected not to find her home standing and that's because as we heard before uh, this fire caught many residents by surprise. They were left scrambling and many left with nothing but their phones, their keys, their wallets and their cars. So they were expecting the worst. Now returning here there's also a sense of gratitude. They're so grateful for what firefighters have done just a few metres to the left of me, we had uh, the flames uh, crowning at about 20 metres into the sky, burnt power poles, and that's what was facing residents when they were leaving. So a lot of gratitude and uh, residents breathing a sigh of relief here at North Rothbury tonight. And Dom, this was really an example of the sort of spontaneous fire that the RFS was warning about today, wasn't it? That's correct, Juanita. Uh, we were earlier at the fire at Wingham, and before we knew it, uh, this fire had started. It was a grass fire. It quickly turned into emergency level. And that was because of the strong northwesterly winds that were coming through, these massive gusts that started off after 10.30 a.m. this morning. And uh, that, I guess, led to this uh, great deal of surprise that residents experienced when they got here. Not long after that, we saw, obviously, that uh, spot fires uh, at Greta, where homes were also impacted there. Don Vukovic reporting there from The Hunter. While the pressure was on in the state's north, southwest of Sydney, it was also a tense day. The, Illaw the Illawarra region also faced catastrophic conditions. Authorities were taking no chances on the leafy urban fringes. Schools were evacuated and locals prepared for the worst. Emily Lawrence reports. A warm start to the day signalled the ultimate warning. This is the first time we've actually changed it to catastrophic, which is a, bit, a little bit nerve-wracking in regards to that. But incredibly, no major fires. Still nothing was left to chance in Helensburg where houses were lost in 2001. We've got um, all our important documents and stuff packed up in a um, big waterproof box that I can throw in the back of the four-wheel drive. As the mercury pushed into the high 30s and winds gusted and swirled, Illawarra's locals could only hope for the best. I have made the decision to start packing now. Just praying. Doesn't happen. A lot of people around here have horses and dogs. National parks from the Royal to the South Coast were shut. Authorities evacuating campers from Buddhari at Jervis Bay at the last minute. For some students, school closures meant a welcome escape in the pool. Or riding it out with mates. A welcome diversion from a dire threat. Sydney South West was also on alert. Early this morning, this brigade smothered a grass fire with help from locals. Looks like it was started by a discarded cigarette. Um, that's that's the uh, that's the guess at this stage, um, and it was actually knocked down by passers-by jumped on it really quickly. Others simply sought refuge by the ocean. If you get that hot, you can just jump in the water pretty quick. I think they just sort of prepare for the worst and hope for the best. There's an anxious wait for a southerly change to hit the Illawarra. Despite the relief, firefighters say conditions will remain dangerous. Late in the day, a fire sparked by train wheels kept Thirlmere crews busy. The sparks come off the wheels and ignited the bush and then it just jumped into the trees and then jumped across the road. So. All I can say is thank God for the fire. But the overall feeling was the challenge to catastrophic conditions was met. We had to plan for the absolute worst. We've all seen the effects of fire and how it damages community. A test run for a long, hot summer to come. Emily Lawrence, ABC News. Let's go to the Rural Fire Service headquarters now, where our reporter Matt Doran is standing by. Matt, that big southerly wind change has already started to sweep up the coast. How worried are fire chiefs about the impact that's going to have tonight? 
Well, certainly, Juanita, it might bring about some cooler weather conditions for firefighters on the ground. But that wind, as it does sweep across the state, could start to whip up more fire activity uh, in many of these areas where there are already massive fires burning. There are still 12 emergency warnings current for fires burning right across this state. And there are concerns that as that wind does come through, areas where there have been fires burning that haven't necessarily reached an emergency emergency warning level, particularly in places like the Hunter Valley, could uh, escalate to that stage and that could whip up the intensity of fires that are already burning there. So there is serious concern that uh, this uh, situation is not over. Though some of those winds won't hit fire grounds until late this evening, potentially even in the early hours of tomorrow morning. So it is still a long night ahead for fire crews who are out there battling these blazes. Well, Shane Fitzsimmons said earlier that the day had unfolded pretty much as expected. But uh, do you get a sense there, R RFS headquarters, that tonight could be the real challenge because of the unpredictability? Certainly. Uh, with that wind coming through, it could start changing the direction of some of these fires and uh, pushing it towards new communities, particularly when you start thinking about the fact that as soon as night falls, uh, aircraft cannot be used to try to combat these, fi these fires. So what we saw today in Taramara, that fire was brought under control very quickly because a plane carrying fire retardant was able to be diverted to the site very, very quickly from another fire. And uh, indeed tonight, if there is a flare-up in fire conditions because of those unpredictable winds, that sort of situation won't happen and it will be solely reliant on those on the ground. So, so given that, that anything could happen anywhere really, uh, where are the resources being focused at the moment? There still are resources uh, being pinpointed towards protecting the Greater Sydney area and the Hunter region, which is of significant concern. But those massive fires that have been burning since the weekend still remain uh, a top priority for firefighters, considering the size of some of them. The area that's been burnt out uh, in some of them, one of them uh, west of Coffs Harbour, has burnt through 150,000 hectares. That means the perimeter of that fire is around 1,000 kilometres. Just imagine the difficulty at trying to keep that uh, within containment lines if this weather uh, does indeed uh, come through and, and causes those unpredictable conditions. So uh, the resources are still spread right across the state uh, with backup from other states but as we know other states are also dealing with their own fire situations so uh, there is a, a serious uh, concern uh, that we are not out of the woods just yet. Matt Doran reporting there from RFS headquarters. The Prime Minister has disowned comments by backbencher Barnaby Joyce, who suggested that two victims killed in the New South Wales bushfires probably voted for the Greens party. The Nationals MP had sought to make a point about the Greens policies, which he claims have made it harder for bushfire brigades to do hazard reduction burning. Mr Joyce has been rebuked by Scott Morrison uh, for what he says is unhelpful political debate. <laughs> And I acknowledge that the two people who died were most likely uh, people who voted for the Green Party. So I'm not going to start attacking them. That's the last thing I want to do. The last thing that people in real need and urgent crisis need at the moment is hearing politicians shout at each other. It's completely unhelpful. Mr Joyce wasn't the only politician prone to exaggeration on the fires. Green Senator Jordan Steele-John told Parliament the major parties were no better than arsonists for supporting fossil fuel industries. In Queensland, fire authorities say that state is in unknown territory as it braces for a dangerous bushfire threat tomorrow. There are 55 active fires burning across Queensland and a complicated wind change overnight will hamper firefighting efforts. In the central Queensland community of Copperball, locals are returning to their properties ravaged by fire on the weekend. Jason Lennox's home has been flattened for the second time in four years. We were doing it up, we had the cyclone over it, so we just started doing it up and, yeah, we got the fire then, so she's been a mongrel couple of years, yeah. He tried to stay and fight the flames, but it got too dangerous. She jumped over, she was just too hot and too much wind and she'd taken out sort of pretty much everyone in this area in about a matter of an hour. Down the road, Colin Stevens and Linda Sate just saved their house, but lost their precious sheds. We put everything in the shed and it's all gone. It's all gone. They're grappling to put a positive spin on their loss. We're alive. That's what counts. My children are alive, so nothing much more you can do. 
Throughout this tiny community, the scene is the same, utter destruction. Ryan Brooks was helpless as the fire raged through his pineapple farm. Yeah, there was nothing I could do but watch it burn. In just one shed, he's lost half a million dollars worth of machinery. We went through Marsha and that was bad. This is probably ten times worse, I'd say. The ferocity of the Cobra Ball fire is captured in this footage by firefighter Dan Boswood. The danger fireys put themselves in is not lost on locals. Those guys, they need medals. They just pump their hearts out for ordinary people. Well, this will give you a bit of an idea of the remarkable lengths firefighters went to. Just to my right, a property has been saved. Here in the middle, everything is destroyed, but just metres away, Another home has been spared. Eleven homes were lost in the region. Authorities are bracing for another terrible day tomorrow. Fifty-five fires are currently burning across the state. Alison Horn, ABC News, Cobrable.